Hello, this is Mr. Stansbury. I'm going to take you through the notes on parallel and perpendicular lines. Okay, At the end of this, you should be able to say, I can determine if lines are parallel or perpendicular, and I can find parallel and perpendicular gradients. Alright, so, lines are parallel if they have the same gradient, which, if you remember, gradient means slope. Okay, So, same slope means parallel. Lines are perpendicular if they happen to have gradients that are inverse reciprocals of each other. Okay, so really quick for example on that there, we have if, let's say our original slope is negative one half. Okay, the inverse is basically the opposite. So like if you add them together, you'd end up getting zero. So the opposite of negative one half is, so perpendicular is gonna be, uh, opposite of negative one half is positive one half. But that's just the inverse part. We also have to take the reciprocal, which means you have to take this and you have to flip it over. The denominator Denominator becomes the numerator and the numerator becomes the denominator. So then that goes to 2 over 1 or simply just the perpendicular slope is 2. Okay? So flip it over. Flip the top to the bottom, bottom to the top, and switch the sign. Okay? That is how you find the perpendicular perpendicular slope anyway. So um, let's take a look at an example. Um, for the line y equals negative 3x plus 7, find the gradient of a parallel line and also of a perpendicular line. So the gradient of a parallel line is the same as the gradient of this. So all we have to do is find the gradient, which is this right here. There's our gradient. So the gradient of a parallel line to that is negative 3. Okay gradient of a perpendicular line let's take negative 3 and since we have to flip it flip the uh, flip it over find the inverse reciprocal we to make our life easy if there's no denominator let's put a 1 under there so we got to flip it over and switch the sign so that turns into 1 over 3 and it was negative so now it's positive so there's our perpendicular line okay all right let's take a look at a, another example example 8 Find K, given that the line joining C to D, which are these coordinates here, is perpendicular to a line with gradient of 2. Okay, so, um, let's see, we know that the, this here is perpendicular to a, a line that has a slope of 2. So let's do this. Let's find that perpendicular um, slope. So we're starting with 2, which is the same thing as 2 over 1. We have to flip it over, so it's 1 over 2, and we also have to switch the sign. It was positive, so it is now negative. So this is now our slope, negative 1 half. Okay, so um, from an earlier section, we had um, this our slope formula, or gradient. Gradient, if you'll remember, is um, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 okay so we now found the perpendicular slope which is negative one half so we know our slope or our gradient is negative one half and that's going to equal y2 which is one minus five all over x2 which is k minus negative two minus the negative don't forget the double negative so that turns into k plus 2. So this is really negative 1 half equals 1 minus 5 is negative 4 and that's simply k plus 2. We have a fraction equals another fraction so usually that our easiest way to figure out what the what this k will be is to do cross products. Right? So 2 times negative 4 is negative 8. Negative 1 times k plus 2 is going to equal negative k and negative 2. Okay, um, r remember that this negative here only has to go with either the numerator or the denominator, but it doesn't do both, because if you did both, it'd be negative over negative, which would make it positive, okay? So uh, I just elected to leave it with the numerator, okay? Now all we got to do here is solve, add 2 to both sides, negative k equals negative 6, right? So that means positive k has to equal positive 6. All right, okay, let's look at some other information here. Three or more points are what you call collinear 
if they lie on the same straight line. Okay, so three, the three points A, B, and C here are collinear. If the gradient of A, B is equal to the gradient of B, C, so if these slopes are the, if this slope here is the same as this slope here, they have to be collinear because they're sharing a point and they're on, um, they have the same slope as well. Okay, so let's use that info there to figure out example nine. Show that the points A, B, and C are all collinear. Okay, so that means we're gonna have to use our gradient formula again. So gradient, let's just write that down in case we forgot. Gradient equals y2 minus y1 x2 over x2 minus x1. So what we need to do is find the gradient of, let's call it slope for now, the slope of AB, and we also got to find the slope of BC. Okay, so if we can find the slope of both of those and they're equal, then we know that they have to be collinear. Okay, so the slope of A and B, that's going to be 3 minus 9 over 0 minus 3. Sorry, 0 minus negative 3. Don't forget the double negative. I almost did. That would not be good. That gives us negative 6 over 3, which is negative 2. Okay, so if we find that the slope of BC is negative 2, then we're in business, which would mean that basically they're uh, collinear. Okay, so let's do B and C. So let's do, let's do this. Let's start with negative 5 minus 3 all over 4 minus 0. Negative 5 and negative 3 is negative 8 over 4 gives us negative 8 divided by 4 gives us negative 2. Since these two are equal, that means that they are indeed collinear. So collinear, yes they are. Okay? Alright, uh, that's all there is for uh, these notes here. If you have any further questions on this, please feel free to ask in class. Thanks.